to strengthen your inner warrior, to really become the man you want to be, to become the biggest, most bold, most expansive version of yourself, it's important to understand that your identity is the center of your gravity. It's the center of your world, is your identity in a lot of ways. And most people's identity is based on other people's perception of them, ideas of other people have about them, or how they want to appear to others. It's externally based. It's externally based on pleasing others, on appearing a certain way to others, or just allowing the, the viewpoints and the opinions of others to affect you. This causes your center of gravity to be outside of you. It causes you to be very uncentered and to never really know who you are because you're always trying to be who other people want you to be. And on a spiritual level, I'm very influenced by Taoist philosophy. I've never called myself a Taoist, but I love Taoist philosophy and I practice Taoist cultivation practices. And a concept I really love from Taoism is Ziran self-arising. And it's essentially that our connection to source arises from within us, as we, we could say our connection to God, to universal consciousness, whatever words you want to use. This is something that arises from within. We have a direct connection within us. We are a piece of the divine spark of creation. We are a piece of the fractal. We could say we are all gods. We are all creators with that divine spark within us. I'm a very spiritual person, I would say. But I'm not a religious person and I'm not huge on big religions because people often get stuck in dogma. And I think personally that bowing down to deities, bowing down to gurus, whatever, something outside of yourself is bullshit because we each have the direct connection to source within us. Now, of course, it's important to have teachers. It's important to have people who have been further down the path from us, but that doesn't mean that they are higher than us. And my path personally is about doing things my own way, doing things in a way that hasn't been done. I'm not, I've never been a big follower. I've never been someone that like tries to be like other people, tries to do things other people do. I've always been kind of the independent person going my own way because I really believe one of the purposes of being in this world, being born into these bodies is to be creators, to contribute something to this world. And often the most valuable things are, I mean, if you look at nature, nature is never repeating itself. If you look at how trees grow, they always grow differently. There's a randomness to it. There's a, uh, an apparent chaos to nature, but at the same time, it follows certain laws. It follows certain cycles and there's a balance to it. I feel like the best thing I can do to give back to this world is to do something unique, to create something that hasn't been done. So coming back to our identity, most of who we believe we are isn't us. It's other people's beliefs and opinions, other people's stories. And these things are often limiting as well. You know, personally, I inherited a lot of stories from my parents, from my family around money, around, oh, I'll just, you know, be stuck at a minimum wage job my whole life, never move out of my hometown, these kinds of things. But eventually I started to realize it's not true. This doesn't have to be true for me. These are just masks they've put on, like we put on these, you know, VR, goggles to have a certain perception of reality. And this is kind of the first programming we get it's from our parents. And so the first challenge is, can you take the good and release the parts that don't serve you? And then that extends, of course, you know, the schooling system, religious institutions, politics, more and more conditioning that gets put upon it. So the question is, can you look at all these things? Can you look at the stories you've been told, how you're supposed to see the world, how you're supposed to think about the world, the things you're supposed to be angered about, the things you're supposed to want to do? Can you take those and truly feel from your heart what is actually going to serve me? What would I truly enjoy at my soul level? Do I really want to snort cocaine, make a lot of money, drive a Lamborghini and bang a girl with silicon breasts? And if you do, if you truly from your soul want that, that's fantastic. But maybe that's just a story you were told. And so you spend your life chasing something you were told you were supposed to want, but often what happens is you get it and it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It's not satisfying. So you're like, okay, well maybe I need more. I need three women with fake breasts and fake asses. I need crazier drugs. I need a even crazier car. I need five houses and it never ends. There's never fulfillment from it because you're always chasing these things because it's just a story. Someone told you you were supposed to want it, but that wasn't coming from your heart, from your soul, from your source. So the first question is what are you creating? What have you been creating? Because again, we are all creator gods. We have the amazing ability to create with absolute free will. And of course, that can be a good or a bad thing, but this is why studying morality and philosophy is important. Of course, I live by the golden rule. You should not do to others what you would not want done to yourself and not violate others' free will. So what are you creating? It's really easy to see. Just look around. Look at your relationships. Look at your body. Look at the home that you live in, your finances, the path you're on in life. Look at everything around you. This is what you've created. This is who you believe you are and what you believe you are worth. It's what you feel you deserve. It's not always on the surface, but at a subconscious level, this is what you've been programmed perhaps to believe 
it's what you deserve. Maybe you're somewhere amazing and you're super stoked, you know, great job. Or maybe you are like me, you know, 10, 12 years ago, and you're pretty uncontent with where you are. You're broke, you feel like you're stuck in life, you're working jobs that you hate, you feel like a slave. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. It just shows that there's room for improvement. And you can step back into the creator seat to create the life that you want to live. And the biggest, the biggest barrier to this is that we're told, oh, you can't change things. You're too old to change. It's too hard because you're from this town or this family or this country or, you know, blah, 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 blah. Throw all that bullshit beliefs away. It doesn't fucking matter. You can do absolutely anything. I'm starting to sound like my high school motivational speakers, but it's so true. You can do anything you want to do. You just have to be able to take action. You have to live your life in a mindset of lucidity instead of just reacting to everything and continuing on with subconscious programming, unconscious patterns. It's time to take action control. And this is the exciting part because that can begin right now. Your life could dramatically change right now. If you choose to follow and act on the things I'm going to share on this video, your life can dramatically change. Okay. So now you see, you know, you look around your life. What have you created? Okay. It's good to have these, these check-in points. Some people go years or decades of life between doing this. Like, oh, oh shit. Maybe I actually don't like this job. Maybe my relationship has completely gone to shit. Maybe I've let my body go to complete shit. Maybe it's time to make a change. Well, I'm too old right now. Now is the time. Your power is here in the now, and in an instant, your entire life can transform. So here's the first thing. What do you want to create? What would you rather have if you don't like what you have currently? Where would you rather live? What kind of relationship would you rather have? How would you like your body to be? Your physical health, your mental health, your sex life, your spiritual path, everything. It's important. You know, how much money do you want to make? It's important to know these things, to have a decision, because without that decision, without knowing what you want, you're just wandering aimlessly like everybody else, stumbling around in the darkness. And it's no wonder why, you know, things haven't gone as the way you've wanted in your life because you haven't been clear on what you want. And this is such an obvious thing, but you may be surprised. Most people have no idea what they want. They aren't extremely specific. They haven't written it down on a piece of paper. So that's the first thing. If you've never done this before, or if you haven't done it for a while, do this right now. Pause this video, write down what you want in all areas of your life, finances, career, relationships, health, everything. That's extremely important. And don't worry about it being realistic or not. And then the next step is that you start taking action towards these things. And it doesn't matter if it's not super organized, like you don't like, oh, I don't know if I have a complete plan to become a millionaire or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Even in the smallest things. Well, maybe I should watch a video on how to start a business or something like that. These little, little things create a communication. They create a ripple in your subconscious mind saying, oh, he's actually ready to change. This creates a message with the universe. Oh, he's ready for something new. And the more you start to do these things over and over again, taking some type of action, it, it really doesn't matter what it is. You take some type of action, it starts to build a lot of momentum. And all of a sudden forces start to align, synchronicities start to happen, unbelievable things, coincidences start to come into place in your life. And that's when the magic really happens. But all that starts from getting clear on what you want and taking action. And of course, this is essential for your dating life, your sex life, your man practicing sexual kung fu, you know, because what I feel is masculine is a man who loves himself, a man who knows who he is, who knows where he's going, who knows what he wants, who's free from slavery, just doing things aimlessly for other people, not serving his true potential, his true heart's desire, a man who is a creator of his life. That is damn sexy. And when you start living your life in this way, you are going to attract a sexy ass partner who's going to be ignited by your fire, your fire of your life's path, by your authentic true self. I mean, that's really it. You start to take action on these things. You do it exactly that. You get clear on what you want. You start acting towards it. Start letting go of the things that are holding you back in life. Stop eating the foods that are giving you inflammation. Stop eating refined sugars, drinking alcohol. Stop spending hours a day staring at Instagram, TikTok, and you start mobilizing yourself. This is the thing is it's simple, but it's not easy. There's something holding a lot of people back from this. And I would narrow this down to laziness and fear. And what this really means is that you're you're staying comfortable. You are being comfortable. You're living in comfort, staying where you're at because somewhere in your mind, you feel that it's more painful to make the change than to stay where you're at right now. There's more pain in doing something new than doing what you've been doing. So you stay where you're at. So it's in the moment when you realize that it's more painful, it's unacceptable for you to stay where you're at right now, to keep doing things in the exact same way. When you start to realize that's more painful than making a change, doing some work, mobilizing yourself, to transform your life, that becomes a motivating force. And this isn't going to be easy because doing this is completely going against the stream of what you've been programmed to do. We're programmed to do the easy thing. We're programmed to do the thing that we're supposed to do. And when you stop doing that, 
when you live your life differently, it starts to glitch the matrix. The people around you try to pull you back down. Oh, nah, I don't think you can really do that. Nope, that's a ridiculous idea. You're gonna be working in that coal mine your whole life, Jimmy. What non-ejaculatory orgasms? No, my doctor told me that you should ejaculate at least three times a week, and that's healthy for your prostate. The NPCs will try to pull you back down. So this is another lesson that sometimes you need to change your friends, change the people that you surround yourself with, because you are the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time with. You tend to have their beliefs, their opinions, and their limitations as well. So look at that. And so really being a warrior, I know I don't drop the word warrior in this title, but being a warrior, this isn't about conquering others. This isn't about, I have to go fight someone, beat someone else's ass and prove to them that I'm better. It's not about that, not for me. It's about conquering yourself. That is truly the battle here. It's about conquering your own laziness, your own resistance, your own limitations to say, okay, mom, dad, grandpa, my whole ancestral line, there's all this, you know, you gave me all these gifts, but all this negative programming too. And can I step out of this prison that my ancestors, my generation has been stuck in, or that the whole collective world has been stuck in these limitations? Can I release these patterns within myself? And now, you know, maybe this brings some violent imagery and you know, sometimes it is really a, a fight, a struggle. And sometimes it's simply about acceptance and love. Yin and yang, I would say, but you, you definitely need a bit of both. You know, no one's getting out of this without some bloody knuckles. So for me, conquering myself, it's about always challenging myself to do better. Can I be a better person now than I was yesterday? Can I be a better man now than I was last year? To go further, to improve all aspects. I'm always trying to up-level everything that I do. Of course, I've always had a bit of an obsessive personality, but I'm like, if I'm gonna do something, I wanna do it to the highest level possible. You know, personally, I don't fuck around. When I'm gonna do something, I go balls deep, baby. So it's like, why not go all the way? Why not live the most incredible, badass, like Hollywood movie-esque life that you can? Because here's the thing, you're gonna die someday. You're going to be laying in a bed or you know, laying somewhere, dying, and you're gonna be thinking on your life and saying, oh my God, like maybe I should have done some things differently. Maybe I should have seen the world. Maybe I shouldn't have spent my whole life sitting in front of an electronic screen in a zombie daze. Maybe I should have created something to leave behind for the world. Personally, I don't wanna experience that. I wanna be laying there dying and be like, okay, I've done a lot. I've experienced all I could experience. I've created amazing things. I've given back to the world. I'm ready to leave this place because that's all you have to take away. You can't take your money. You can't take your Instagram booty models. All you can take is your soul experience. So remember your priorities. And I would say one of the biggest pieces of this for myself has been stepping into the space of the inner child, allowing everything to be playful, to play, to have fun. Because here's the thing, like, yeah, you need to work hard. You need to have discipline. You need to strengthen yourself. You need to do the things you don't want to do. But that doesn't have to be this like miserable, terrible thing. You can enjoy the whole process. And something that really helped me was seeing life as a video game. To me, it's like, we, we live in a simulation. I know it's kind of a cliche at this point, but the world is a simulation. We're just like occupying these flesh suits, really like the most elaborate, realistic VR game that you could play. So it's like, we're already in the most high level video game possible. Enjoy the challenges, make them fun. Kids are great at this. Kids are always creating these games, these challenges, these competitions. Like I remember being a child, I could be doing anything and I could be having like the greatest time. I would have more fun as a five-year-old in a sandbox with a plastic fork than, you know, a millionaire would have with five yachts and unlimited hookers. And you know what I mean? It's just like, there's no comparison. So stepping in back into that space, which has been beaten out of a lot of us, but you can recapture that. So see, this is, okay, this is my, my avatar. This is my suit. Who do I want to be? Who do I want my video game character to be? Start creating your ideal character and become that. Ask yourself, who do I want to be? What kind of characteristics do I want to have? How do I want to interact with others? Ultimately, it's like, what will bring me the most fun, satisfaction, just like epic adventure in my life? For me personally, growing up, I loved Sonic the Hedgehog. Luke Skywalker, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Sylvester Stallone, characteristics of a lot of my teachers I've studied with. You know, I have a, a badass Tai Chi teacher, Gary Kleiman, who kicks my ass every practice session. My teacher, Michael Wynn, who's a Nadon Taoist alchemical wizard. Another Tai Chi teacher, Jude, who's helped me get through some deep barriers in my life and my practice. So like, there's these characteristics of all these people I've just mentioned. Maybe, maybe this seems ridiculous to some people, but I know I don't care. This is how I live my life. And it's like, what aspects of these characters can I start to embody myself? I played a lot of video games as a teenager, and I love this aspect of, of games where you're like up-leveling yourself. You're building your stats, whatever it is. Like I used to play, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and like like you take the character into a gym and like work out and like you can go eat food because you have to eat and I'm a teenager sitting on my ass doing these things like oh this is so much fun and now as an adult I'm like wait a second I could go to the gym 
and do the workout and sculpt the body. I can do Qigong and have this incredible energetic experience. I can do all these things in real life. And so eventually, real life became the video game for me. So but like people who spend hours a day like watching media and playing video games, it's like, why the hell would you spend your life doing this when we live in a virtual reality? We live in the most elaborate video game ever played. It's like, yeah, I beat ass at Smash Bros 100%, but more importantly, I'm beating ass in life. Stop taking life so seriously and just have fun with it. It has helped me tremendously, I would say. And a big part of this is really because one of the things is we're so disconnected from having presence in the moment of our life. It's like, why can't we just be as open and, and joyful and playful and creative as we were as children? Because we have all these constrictions now in our, you know, our energy channels, our subconscious mind, and we're so closed down that this is why people take drugs, they drink alcohol all the time, is, is because it helps numb themselves and release some of these constrictions. But you can do this yourself. That's why I practice Qigong for hours a day. This is what like mindfulness type practices help you to do. Like one of my favorite things to do is to go outside and go for a walk and just 100% be in the present moment. Just listen to the birds singing, listen to all the noises around me, just feeling my body, feeling my breath, absolute presence. And then you notice the tendency of the monkey mind to come back in and try to pull you back into the past and the future. But the more I could just be here and now, it brings back that magic of just pure presence that I had strongly in my childhood. And so the more you can use your mind to focus, to concentrate, to really enjoy the situation that you're in, the more profound it will be. It's like one of my favorite movies growing up was this 90s movie called Sidekicks. Chuck Norris, Jonathan Brandis. Oh, it's fantastic. I watched this recently. I'm like, this is fucking great. Basically, this kid's fantasizing about Chuck Norris being his sidekick and he's, you know, kicking villain's ass and all this stuff. He's studying with this badass Chinese Kung Fu teacher and his teacher's telling him like, you must be able to use that kind of dream world you live in. You must be able to control it and use it to augment your life, to enhance your life, to make it richer. Instead of escaping from life, you use it to augment your life. And interestingly, there's this parallel from training I've done in Yi Chuan practice where my teachers tell me to use certain mental imagery, like imagine you're in a beautiful uh, nature environment or imagine there's 100 people around you about to attack just to, to kind of augment your uh, your intention and your state of energy and in various like performance situations like I do martial arts and I was doing my my testing routine recently where you know you do some sparring martial arts forms and things and it's an instant that brings about stage fright but it's like I use my mind to just like imagine I'm in this epic nature sanctuary training ground and it helped me be much more relaxed in my body and just like enjoy the whole thing. So I'm just sharing like this is what we did as kids. It's like we used our minds to make everything around us epic, playful, and creative. And guess what? You can still do this. So now it's about allowing the inner child within you to create, to play from the heart and have the morality, the strength, and the protection of your adult self to kind of contain this as well. That, that's what it for me now means to be an adult. It doesn't mean I can't be playful or have fun anymore. Like, fuck, I don't wanna be this rigid asshole personally that just needs to get drunk every weekend to try to forget about the fact I hate my life. No, that will never be me. And this is all about how do you get yourself into the vibe of being a creator god? How do you get into that vibe of just playing, of just, ah, enjoying everything? everything being epic again. And what helps me is cranking some fun music, moving my body, dancing around, just having fun. For me, body movement is, is really important. It's a great way to shift your state into a more just like, ah, fun, grounded. Of course, like formal Qigong practices and yoga is great, but like even just spontaneous movement, like something I like to do in the evening is go outside and practice my martial arts, just like punching, kicking around, just like feeling like a kid again. And, and it really gets me into this high vibe state of just fun, cranking some, some good tunes and gets me in the flow. So here's the thing. Start becoming the hero of your story. Get excited about life. Realize that every single moment is a chance for you to redefine, to recreate yourself, and to create the life that you choose. Don't let the world wear you down. Don't let the fear stories and politics and all this fucking horse shit we're dealing with every day, don't let it drag you down. You can create your own reality and embody it so strongly that it warps reality around you, that it warps other people's reality because you are living and creating from your heart, doing what you enjoy. That's it, baby. Thank you.